So where to begin? How about this Barack Obama Democratic controlled Congress on oil traders? My next guest spoke to a congressional panel today about the effects of speculation on the hard hit airline industry. Doug Steenland is Northwest Airlines CEO. So, Doug, your view is that the speculators confirming what Barack Obama suspects and the Congress has charged are behind this oil run up? I think they're making a contribution to it, Neil. I think it's also a supply issue. It's a uh, uh, you know, runs runs the full gamut of a fulsome energy policy. But in the near term, I think clearly uh, the amount of financial dollars that have come into this market, where paper barrels or or uh, bubble barrels, whatever whatever you're going to call them, uh, the spread between oil consumed is about 13 to one. Uh, and if you look at the degree of volatility that's now in the oil markets, where oil has gone up over $70 a barrel. Over the last 10 months, there have been days where oil has gone up over $10 a day. Right. Uh, really, it's unheard of, and it doesn't, it can't be explained by any supply demand phenomena. Let me ask you this, though, Doug. The, the speculators have had a substantial role in our markets since soon after the last energy crisis. Now, it was uh, a, a dominant role, in other words, half of all oil revenue related trading for the last 10 years or so. It was really uh, the last year or so that gas prices, oil prices went through the roof. So, so what do you make of that? Well, I think in, I think in part, and I would, I would agree that it's not a, uh, a, a, a total explanation, but a partial one, uh, that, you know, pension dollars and the like that are looking for other asset diversification right. uh, have come into this market in a very, very large way. Uh, and have basically, you know, because so much money has come in and it's chasing, uh, you know, these futures contracts, it has clearly forced the price up. So you think and that... It's mostly, and they're mostly long positions, you know. Well, that's it. I know people betting on those prices going still higher. So you think that investors who've come to see nothing out of the stock market, what the S&P's, what, barely budged over the last nine years, um, have sought out the one investment that's been paying off, and that's been oil, oil-related... Uh, issues, the oil commodity itself, and that's the problem. It's it's a problem, and I don't think they're 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 acting you know wrongly by doing that. They're you know meeting their own fiduciary duties. But I think a commodity market like the oil market, uh, you know, needs to be protected and needs to have you know a proper balance between uh, you know the people that are actually taking delivery right. and the people that are just purely purely in there betting financially. Uh, as to what they want the outcome to be. Here's my we word. We could use more. I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Finish that thought. I was going to say clearly we could use more supply. Uh, we could use more conservation. Right. Uh, you know the airline industry itself. We've got six billion dollars of a refleeting program underway that's designed to make our airplanes more fuel efficient. So we're operating the same size airline today that we were several years ago, but we're using 25 percent less energy. So all of that contributes to this. Uh, but I think there's a very near-term fix. Uh, if Congress addressed some of these regulatory issues that deals with that deal with oil commodity trading. Here's what I worry about, Doug. Best intended consequences have unintended consequences. That let's say you were to shake out the speculative role, the individual role, uh, be that a rich or not so rich individual in the oil markets, they will find more rewarding markets abroad where the leverage is much greater. So ironically, we could stop that sort of speculation in the United States, but they could sort of pick up and run with it in London or Germany, where the leverage could be many times what it is in this country, and the, the price, you know, exacerbations could be many times as well. Well, I think, I think the evidence is, is very strong that the commodity market for oil is going to either be in the United States or in London, and that because so much oil is consumed here that anybody who wants to be a player in this business has to trade in the United States and therefore has to subject themselves to the jurisdiction of the CFTC and the Congress. And so I think this notion that if Congress changes the law correctly, uh, the business is going to run offshore uh, is just simply wrong. All right. Doug Seeland, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, speaking of the CFTC right now, enter Brad Chilton. He is the commissioner for the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, whose response, I guess, would be to police all the more what's going on in trading out there. Commissioner, what do you make of this argument raised in Congress today, echoed by Doug Steenland today, that uh, there's some policing to do? 
Absolutely, Neil. I think Doug's uh, right on the mark on a on a, a bunch of spots. I mean, uh, this market has actually seen new investors in it in the last two or three years, Neil. Uh, Two hundred billion dollars specifically, and just in the WTI oil contract on the NYMEX, we've seen a thirty percent or more increase in speculators. So it has increased, and Doug's right. It's the hedge funds and the pension funds, and I'm not saying they're doing anything illegal, but I can't imagine they're not having a thumb on the scale with gas prices and oil prices. So, so should they be out of the market, Commissioner, or what? Well, I think you need to ensure that, you know, we, we, we can place the blame where it belongs. And we may not be 100 percent sure that they are causing, as Doug said, uh, all of the problems. But if they are a part of it, we should certainly think about remedies for it. And that may mean uh, position limits. It may mean something else. But uh, the first thing is to figure out if this new class of investors, folks who, as Doug was saying, are transferring from the securities industry into the derivative sector, if they're causing an inordinate price movement, uh, then we should do something about it. Yeah. But do you worry that one inordinate price movement in one area could be another inordinate price movement in another area? In other words, if we were to police what's going on in oil, we would similarly have to move if such bubbles, and that's what many characterize what's happening in oil as a bubble, uh, would happen in gold or silver or platinum or corn or soybeans or, you know, any one of a host of other commodities that have these big pops. Where do you draw the line? Well, you're, I think you're already seeing it, Neil. I mean, I think if you look at the ags in particular, um, you're already seeing these investors. I mean, you'll find hedge funds that actually, you know, put a percentage of their portfolio in the ags and keep it there long. Uh, and so that's a concern for us also. So would we you recommend, all these markets. Uh, I understand. Would you recommend, I've heard this from some very smart folks who say, look, they're not for wiping out individual uh, pension fund participation in these markets, but yeah. limiting it. But I guess my question would be, how do you limit it? And, and how do you suffer the unintended consequence issue of, of over-regulating these markets? You're exactly right, Neil, and it's a fine line that you have to walk because, like you said, they could move overseas. They could also move to the uh, over-the-counter market, and that's not regulated. We can't see those dark markets, so you have to be very careful. I think the first thing you might want to consider doing would be putting position limits on those who aren't involved in the physical delivery of these commodities, hmm. just the people that are speculators and in it, as Doug was saying, that are just making a bet. Okay, so much... Here's what I worry about the slippery slope thing, Commission. I know you've thought this through very well, but let's say someone has seen the price of Apple stock soar, right? And, and it would be akin to saying only those who love technology or have a vested interest in the technology industry could invest in Apple. I know that's certainly not your intention, but do you fear that could be an extension of your argument? It absolutely could be an extension, but if they are making the price of apples so that Johnny Appleseed can't even afford it, we should do something about it, Neil. Okay. Commissioner, very interesting point. We'll see where it's going. But you think that regulation's coming, I guess, right? I think it's coming, and I think we need to be looking to make sure that we're doing the right thing for American consumers.